All right, we're doing something a little different today. We're taking a cheap $60 Yi camera, and these are proprietary cameras, but they're very, very cheap, so you can basically have a wireless camera anywhere, um, and then we're gonna do basically a firmware hack, and this will basically go through and make it to where you have a clean output, uh, RTSP output, which you can import into OBS, security software, whatever you want. It basically unlocks the entire camera to do whatever you need to do with it. So with that, let's get over on the desktop and go over how to actually make this function. I do live stream every Monday and Friday, so if you have a question for me, be sure and stop into my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. So this is actually a completely open source project. However, it does rely on a licensing. Now they've done licensing just so somebody doesn't rip them off and then take all their hard work and well, just profit from it because there's a lot of uh, vendors out there that'll just go ahead and grab these projects, make, buy a bunch of Yi cameras and then just upload this hack to it and then just sell them for a uh, absorbent fee because to get a clean RTSP feed from a camera, typically those cameras all start a couple hundred dollars and going up. So there's a lot of profit that you could do if you were to mass produce this. And that's why they kind of put that, uh, little thing in there that licensing now the licensing i will say i'll go over the entire donation and getting that going it's about six dollars us or five uh great britain pounds so i mean it just depends on where you're at but it, it does take about 24 hours every time you submit for a license not a big deal um as you know if you were actually uploading all this footage and having the Yi company actually store all your footage i think they charge 60 dollars a year so I'm totally okay giving $6 for a licensing fee forever that I can just upload to this camera and then get a clean output. So uh, I'm okay with that, but if you're not, I totally understand. So this firmware basically uh, does missing updates, RTSP, and then it just kind of gives it a little more functionality as far as the actual camera itself goes. It tells you, hey, what all can you do with it? You can actually put it on like a Synology surveillance station. So let's say I wanna record everything that happens in my studio. I can easily upload all that footage to a surveillance station. So could you imagine already having a Synology box and then just spending maybe 60 bucks and then having a camera? Or maybe I put some out uh, externally so I can see all the traffic that's happening or in and around here and then have all that you know, stored on my system for less than a hundred dollars. That's kind of, kind of insane. Uh, as most surveillance stations and stuff are really pricey. And also most of them have really horrible interfaces. So, uh, just having this capabilities is very powerful. As far as the feature set, you get all of these different things, which is great. So you can actually do web server, you can do SSH, you can do Telnet, you can do all kinds of just craziness with them, which is fantastic. Uh, obviously, I really want the RTSP server. That's why I do actually buy like the licensing for this. But uh, let's get into actually getting into the camera. First, check to make sure you have a supported camera. You will need a micro SD card and compact. When, when you do it, I actually used a 128 gig SD card because I didn't have a small one that was 16 gigs like they say here. However, I just formatted one partition that was 16 gigabytes or less on it. And then I left the rest of the SD card completely unprovisioned. So uh, you can use a bigger card like I did. Just make sure the partition's not a really large partition. Otherwise it might have problems reading it. Mine worked without a hitch. Uh, and then, all you do is download these two files. Now, check to make sure your camera is on here. All these cameras are supported. I have the 1080p dome camera. So I downloaded these two. These two files you just put directly on the root of that SD card, and then you just plug it right into your camera, and then voila, you're off and going. Remove power, power it back on. You'll see this yellow light. Just follow these instructions, and then you'll be presented 
with this screen. Now, the this right here is all of the stats, uh, configurations. You can change your host name. You can disable all cloud. So if I wanted to disable the Yee app and all cloud features, I could do this and then it goes completely into private mode, meaning it never calls home. Now, the Yee app is still required to basically modify how it looks down at me. Like when I'm actually adjusting where this camera is actually pointed to, because you can actually go pan left to right, up and down. Uh, I'd still need to use the Yee app for that, but it retains that position. So if you have it in a static spot you and you never need to change where it's pointing, by all means, disable this, put it in privatized mode, and you're good. And then you have uh, all the different aspects, though. You got SSH, FTP, and then just the basic web server, which is what we're accessing right now. Um, so you can go ahead do all these and then the really the thing i really wanted was the rtsp okay to acquire the actual rtsp you absolutely need the cam hash right here i have blanked it out so hopefully you don't see this on your screen but we're copying that and we're going to paste it right into the supporters form uh, the supporters license request form was done through uh, actual discord you can't just go to this form you actually have to go and uh, grab it from their Discord. So I actually have Discord pulled up. I said, hey, donate in main chat under the donate uh, chat channel. And then they send me a custom form. I click on that. I get to this page and then I just paste my cam hash right into here. Then I choose what license. I'm just going to go ahead and do five euro today. And then license name. I will say I am Chris Titus. And then say next. And then say Discord name. Uh, this is actually over on the Discord corner. It's in the left corner. So I'll go ahead and do that. Paste my Discord name in and submit. And I'll be taken to PayPal. And I'm going to go ahead, put all that in and do the donation. All right. It says five pounds, actually. So that's probably, a, uh, I don't know what the conversion is. Probably like seven or eight bucks, maybe. Oh, hey, a pound has dropped. It's only six bucks. That's not bad at all. I will go ahead, donate now. All right, it is done, and it's gonna send me back here shortly. It says, thank you for being part of this project. Uh, it'll send me a licensing file in the email. I'll be able to head and uh, grab that licensing file, add it to my actual Yee camera, and then I'll have full control to pull it into OBS. All right, so after our donations made, we now have access to the supporters channel, and uh, we'll get go to the pinned messages up at the top, and we need to download the latest and greatest RTSP v4. So this is actually at the top. Click download. And that should go ahead. Download that version, that 7-zip. We'll come back to here and go into our camera and choose that file from our downloads. So now that we have that file, the licensing file is going to be sent to me via email. I should have that plugged in too. Once we get both the, the RTSP file and the licensing file, we'll hit upload, and then our Yi e camera will now have a full-blown RTSP server. Okay, so I finally got my licensing file. It took almost a day, uh, but they did send it to my email. I put that in after the RTSP package, hit save changes, it rebooted the camera, and now I have this on the screen. Now on this screen, you'll notice there is some toggles here. Now it is still a little finicky. So one thing I will say, if you change any of these settings on here, you will need to reboot the actual camera anytime you make a change. Otherwise it will error out. You won't be able to access the RTSP stream, all that things. But I now use this on all my live streams for a start screen, which I'll show here in just a second. Um, but what I'm doing here is just grabbing this stream and you can pull this to any kind of source. You can use uh, OBS, you can use VLC, you can use any video player basically that can grab an RTSP stream, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna actually just go over to terminal real fast. We'll do FF play and then the RTSP stream. So this should grab it in, pull up the actual audio source to the overhead camera here, and you'll see it kind of pull in. Uh, right now, it looks like it's uh, starting to buffer. Ooh, that looks a little funky. 
Now, if you run into too many bugs, that looks pretty bad. So let's quit out of this. Let's give it a reboot. Uh, just because that looked really, really bad. So we'll click reboot. Reboot camera. Uh, because it's been on for a couple days now. Uh, just to see if it can't reconnect and do it. I did notice on the HD streams, um, this was really not a good solution, which is kind of crazy because you can actually see above my head. That's where the access point is. So I know it's got a really good uh, connection. There's no way it doesn't, uh, as that's a really powerful access point, and it's not even going 10 feet. But that also kind of just tells you, hey, you get what you pay for with these cameras. These Yi cameras are like 30 to 60 bucks, I think, for 1080p. I mean, it's upscaled. It's, it's not true 1080p. You're never going to get a great quality, and there's going to be a considerable amount of latency because it's completely wireless. Uh, it, it's for, for what it is, you can get a clean stream. For, for that price, I mean, I, I'm pretty happy with the result at the end of the day, paying $7 extra to get a full clean stream that ha doesn't have any DRM or any front-end application to it. Let's see what that stream looks like now. We're just going to go ahead, pull it in again, see, uh, see what happens if we get the errors and, and packets. Ah, yeah, yeah, much better. There we go. So now you can see the overhead stream right up there. And uh, it's about a three second delay. You can kind of see as I talk. Yeah, you see that delay? That's crazy. Uh, so anyways, yeah, kind of a, a fun thing. Uh, so what do you use this for? There's, there's a lot of practical uses and things that I can think of. Um, I'm really getting into streaming and just kind of uh, tweaking the actual things you can do during a live stream just to kind of add a little flair. Now, I have OBS on here, and I'm using something to blur the picture a little bit. So you're like, wait, wait a second, it's not even a good picture to start with. Well, there's some cool things you can do with these. So imagine you're at a start screen, and you're waiting for someone's stream to start. How do you make that interactive? How do you engage your audience? And let's just do that real fast. Here we are. It's blurred out a little bit. It, you don't know if that's a good camera or not. You, you probably think it's more than a, you know, a $30 camera off Amazon that had been hacked with, with the custom RTSP license. But uh, yeah, you can see me talking. I'm waving my arms. Look at that. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So uh, we'll go back to the primary. But that is uh, the actual camera usage right here um, pretty amazing uh there's some practical uses for this good for security footage as well um but i can think of just a lot of different ways to utilize just an extra camera somewhere that doesn't cost practically anything all right and that's it for our e camera setup i love this little thing i i'm mainly using it for my start screen but i think i will go ahead uh, i'm using a different surveillance thing for my house right now um, but if I wanted to do it on the cheap and have it all localized and actually have complete control over the, all those feeds, uh, this isn't necessarily a bad setup. However, I probably would end up going more with a wired ca camera because the latency on these are, are substantial and I would want a little higher quality as you know most of my outside cams and stuff uh, are a little bit better. I like hardwire. I just don't trust the wireless, as you saw, it kind of got a little finicky there where I needed to reboot. Uh, so for surveillance purposes, I probably wouldn't trust this camera for that. However, um, it depends on how much money you have to spend. A lot of the higher end with actual hardwire surveillance models, you know, that's a lot of money to plop down just for surveillance. So this is a good, happy medium. So it's best to have at least something. And for less than 100 bucks, you can definitely get there. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.